I walk my way to the t- I cannot fit in the middle. I I cannot fit in the middle. I I cannot fit in the middle. I walk my way to the top. I. What a week it has been in this country, and. Man, I don't even know where to start. We had a lot of things that transpired throughout this week, starting on, of course, Wednesday, where the Capitol basically got invaded. The Capitol, people were able to come in. You had people who some call terrorists, some call um, all type of different names, which are valid in my opinion. People who came in with not good, not so good intentions, seeking to potentially cause harm and do damage to the capital and people that were in it all because of their political interests or their disagreements with what transpired in our election. And so today we're going to talk about some takeaways, some Christian takeaways from a chaotic week that we could have. And this isn't the only things that you could take away. I'm sure there's so much that we all can gather from what happened. It was a very unfortunate week uh, that we've experienced, very unfortunate day. We had about five people that died as a result of it. One of them was an officer. It was just crazy. And I'm not going to go too much into my opinions, but the way we're going to do it, and I think what always proves to be effective in these times when we're thinking about politics, when we're thinking about strife, racial racial injustice, all of these different things is leaning on the word and takeaways that we need to have as men and women of God in this time. And that's who I'm really speaking to. If you're not a Christian or you don't come from that background, that's okay too. My hope that this video will still reach you in a way, even though this may not be your worldview. But my hope is that this can be in some way, shape, or form edifying to whoever checks it out. So let's get it. We're going to go right in and we're going to go into Romans chapter 14, and we're going to read a few verses from there. So just to provide a little bit of context, Romans chapter 14, the passage that we're reading from in context really focuses on causing one another to stumble and being mindful of the differences that we have that aren't necessarily centered in sin, but they are maybe centered in something that could be a stumbling block for one of our brothers or sisters. So but I'm going to take a little bit out of this and each scripture has one interpretation, but many applications. And so I'm going to apply this scripture as a takeaway for us in this time. And I want to start off by saying that Christians, we cannot get caught up in these things, regardless of who we voted for, regardless of our political affiliations or ideologies. We can't get caught up in this because we're dealing, once we start to deal with extremes, we run a risk to have a negative impact on the gospel being shared. We have a we run the risk of a negative impact of when it comes to sharing the gospel. And where I'm coming from is there's a verse that talks about I believe where it says basically that don't argue with a fool because from a distance you can't tell the difference between who's a fool and who's not. So you may come from a righteous place, you may have a good point, a good viewpoint on something even good opinions on political matters. But if you are engaging with someone that is foolish or you are in a situation that's ingrained in foolishness, you're going to come off as a fool, right? So we can't get caught up in this. And one takeaway that I have from this is Romans 14, where it talks about stumbling blocks. But specifically, there's a really interesting part within here. And we're going to read from the ESV version. And it says in verse 16, so this is Romans 14, verse 16. So do not let... What you regard as good be evil spoken of as evil, or I'm sorry, what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of here's here's my part that really, I think, spoke to me. Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. That is what the kingdom of God is about. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's not about eating or drinking. And what that scripture is equating eating and drinking to is things that some people may not agree with or feel like will be conducive for them. And even being in the presence of it can cause harm. And what a lot of times happens with us and our political views or our conspiracy theories, if we're talking about these days with the virus and things like that, or all of these other different areas, what happens is... What we think is just us operating in our Christian freedom. We have a freedom in this country to speak. We have a freedom to have differences of opinions and things like that. A lot of times we think that just because we have the ability to do something, that that is going to be okay in every single context or situation. 
But there's a verse that is very pivotal in 1 Corinthians that says, all things are lawful to me, but all things are not expedient. That means it's not going to serve a benefit. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So there is thing, there are things that can be helpful. There are things, uh, I'm sorry, not helpful. There are things that we can do. There is areas within our Christian freedom that we can explore, but it's not going to necessarily always be beneficial. And then it says, all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Many of us have allowed political movements to have a power that usurps God and his influence in our lives. But instead, political figures now are at the forefront of the power that is over our lives. The government now has a power that is over our lives. Politicians have a power that usurps the power of God now. And that has become a severe tradition in America that we have to forsake because when we allow politicians to have that role, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more if you just stick around, have a whole nother topic on that, but we can't allow politicians to have that power. So kingdom of God is not in meat and in drink, not in these different things that we have within our Christian freedom. We have in our Christian freedom to vote and to have our different political opinions. And of course, allowing our Christian worldview to influence some of those. But it's mainly in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And then if you read on, whosoever thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. Very important. Acceptable to God and approved by men. So then, so then, let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Let us pursue what makes for peace and mutual upbuilding. When we pursue those things that make for peace, when we pursue the things that are going to unify people, that are going to build up people, those are the things that are going to create more environments for people to have an experience with Jesus, to come to God. That is going to create the best unity within the church. And I've talked about this in other videos, but our number one endeavor should be to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, as it says in Ephesians 4 and 3. So we can't, and and let's go back to the passage. Number uh, Verse 20 says, do not for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Do not for the sake of a political figure, destroy the work of God or hinder the testimony of Jesus Christ. The work that God is doing on this earth. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to make another stumble by what he eats. So again, this is more so geared toward a stumbling block, which is good. That is the interpretation. But the big thing is, let us pursue what makes for peace and mutual upbringing. If our politics divide in the sense that because someone has a difference of a view, that's one thing. We have a right to vote for who we see fit for this country. And some of us vote out of our Christian conscience, which is great. But don't allow our voting, don't allow our political preferences, whether we're liberal or conservative and socially or or fiscally or however you want to view it, don't allow those things to be what divides people from unity. Those things should not be what divides because at the end of the day, there are, Everybody has their paradigm of what will be a logical solution to problems or which will make people happy. But at the end of the day, it's all incomplete because neither are going to push unifying people in Christ Jesus. Neither will unify people in Christ Jesus because they're all going to be from a secular paradigm, from a worldly paradigm and how the world thinks. It's going to be influenced by the worldly systems. All right. So no political party has uh, autonomy over the concept of morality from a Christian belief system. So let's continue. We're going to read another verse. And this is what I think a lot of us have missed the mark in. And I know I have from time to time, and I've had to repent over this. But this is what we should be known as and by. A lot of us want to be known as a conservative social or fiscal conservative or a liberal, or we want to be known as a progressive. We want to be known by our denomination. We want to be known by our, whatever gang we're a part of. I'm calling denominations gang, gangs. Shout out to my brother Bartholomew. He talks about that. And he says, you know, it's like gang banging almost political parties. But John 13, 35, words from Jesus By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. 
If you have love one to another, then you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, what happens is we forget about this. We forget that love is the fulfillment of the law. Having the love of God in your heart, when we come to Christ, having his love at play is ultimately going to be the number one difference maker in people being reached. Because here's the thing. You win more bees with honey. That's a principal thought that we all need to keep. We win more bees with honey. People don't care to know what you know until they know that you care. Then they care to know what you know. If they know, if you don't think you care, then they're not going to hear you out. And so we operate by being known by love. And anybody that doesn't operate in the love of God, number one, we should question. Anyone that blatantly disregards love and unity, we have to set to the side. And I'm not talking about just our political leaders, because we understand there's a lot of divisiveness in politics all across the board, but we have to really make a priority for us to focus on unity, especially in these divided times, because like it says in verse 19 of Romans 14, pursue what makes for good. I'm sorry, what makes for peace and for mutual upbringing. And we have to be known by our love for one another, because the Bible calls for us to love the Lord with all of our hearts, minds, souls, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And they go hand in hand. He said that is the first and great commandment. He didn't say the great two commandments. He united loving him and loving them. That's how I always put it. Love him and love them. He united loving people and loving God. He equated it all as hand in hand. And then the other verse that, and this is another passage that I thought was helpful too, was in 1 John 14, I'm sorry, 1 John 4, verse 7. It says, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And it goes on to talk about how God showed his love and what real love is. And this is from the NLT version. Then it says in verse 11, dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, God lives us and his love is brought to full expression in us. And what's amazing about this passage is his love manifested inside of us by his spirit is what shows people God is real. God can be made manifest and God can express himself outside of just his people. But guess what? A pastor once wrote a book called He Sat Down. And in that book, he talked about how God, Jesus sat down on the throne so that the church can be used. The body of Christ, as it's referred to, can be used to share the gospel. We often hear people say God doesn't need us. And you know what? That is true if you're looking at a literal sense because he's almighty, all power. He's omnipotent. He's an omnipresent God. I mean, he does it. He's all knowing, almighty, all powerful and omnipresent. He doesn't need us, but he chose to need us. He made the distinct choice to work through his people, to fill our hearts with his spirit and make a whole bunch of many Jesuses in a sense. Not making us, equating us to God, but by his spirit, using us the similar way that he would use his own son. So I hope this has been helpful. These are the main takeaways. So if you want them in listed out form, number one, understanding that we can't allow our political differences or our worldview differences outside of the faith, things that are politically driven. We can't allow those things to become the stumbling blocks for somebody coming close to Christ or wanting to be connected to a church. Many people are stopping coming to church. I talk to Christians often and there are people who don't, you wouldn't even know were Christians who do believe, but have disconnected themselves from the church because of politics. So number one, let's get off the political tip. We can have our political opinions, but let's get off of that. Now, let's focus on, as it says in Romans 14, let us pursue, 14, 19, let us pursue what makes for peace and mutual upbuilding. Number two, let us be known by what we are for, not what we are against. Let us focus on what we are for, which is we're known by love and let that love continue to show. So hope that has been helpful that is something that we must take away in this time. Make sure you share this with somebody. Share this with somebody that's struggling with these topics. And 
Just remember, let us be known by love and our pursuit for peace and righteousness. I walk my way to the top, I I cannot fit in the middle, I I cannot fit in the middle, I I cannot fit in the middle, I walk my way to the top, I